All right, so today, yes, I got my relays. These are 48 volt relays. I uh, don't know if you guys can see whatever's on there, if that helps, but that's what I have, 48 volts, 40 amps. Uh, these are the five pin relays. So I have access to both a normally open and normally closed state. And uh, pretty much I had to look up, see what they were, how they work how people usually use them. Um, so basically I got a set of three of them, but uh, I thought I needed two for back there, but I think I just need one since I have the five pin relays. Uh, so either one or the other switch will be thrown based on if I'm in forward or reverse. By default, it's forward. So it's a normally open, or no, the forward goes after the normally closed state. So if I turn this on, and I heard it click. Wait, why would it click? If there's power. So you turn it on. All right. Ah, oh, because it was the switch that was clicking. That's what I heard, not the relay. And now you hear two clicks at one right after the other. You hear that? So the two clicks are uh, one of the contactors flipping off while the other contactor is flipping on. And uh, the, the sound's too loud that you can't really hear the, the relay itself clicking back there. Um, so basically what I did was uh, I set up a separate 12 volt power supply back here. So I do have, there, that's the uh, 20 amp power supply. And this one's only uh, five amps. These switches use about uh, an amp and a half each. So I figured um, that power supply might be perfect uh, for what's going on back here in addition. Well, not, the relay itself isn't operated off of that. The relay is operated off of uh, 48 volts. Where is the 48 volt? <laughs> so basically, uh, I have power coming into the power switch before it goes to the forward and reverse switch. Now, uh, when I get my three position switch, I'll have forward, neutral, and reverse in that scenario, I think I'll need the second relay, just that uh, when I'm in neutral, none of these are activated. So that's like another safeguard or fail safe to make sure this motor does not spin. Right now, there's so many safeguards in here. For one, I have the battery cut off. If that's off, nothing happens. Then I have the fuse, if the fuse blows, nothing happens. Right after the fuse goes to the uh, four eight volt block, if one of those fuses blows, uh, nothing happens. Then that comes over to the, uh, the key switch. If that's off, nothing can happen. Uh, if it's on, it comes over to the forward and reverse switch. If it's in neutral, nothing happens. Um, right now there's only forward and reverse. Then that goes to the 12 volt power supply. Maybe I should get a fuse back there, but it's just, it's just the two contactors, there's nothing else. Um, but it might be a good idea to have them anyway, just, just for a good measure. Now the other thing is uh, we have the main contact switch, which is operated by that switch and that switch and that switch on the bottom of the potentiometer. So when the pedal's high, contactor's off. So there's a lot of fail, fail safes in, in this whole situation where uh, you really don't want the power going all the way to the motor unless it's really necessary. Um, like it's really intentional. So the next step, what am I waiting for? Oh yeah, uh, I need a wire going from here over to the Ford in reverse. And then uh, that's fine, but I also need both forward and reverse going to the potentiometer. But I can't have the two wires connected in any way 
that would always make this go in reverse or always make this go uh, forward in reverse. Basically what I need is I need two diodes so that the forward and reverse switch coming over to this, they don't um, make the two lines connect. And then that will be the full system. Once I get the two diodes, this thing is complete other than um, I need to connect these over to the motor. That shouldn't be too bad. Uh, once that is all done, that would be the complete system. Or no, I'm still waiting for the battery monitor to come in the mail. But still, it's complete enough, which means uh, I should start charging these up and connecting them all in uh, parallel. And then I can start moving this into the car. Probably move the potentiometer first, just because I'm not sure how it's going to be wired in. And then uh, i got to figure out how to fasten the different switches and the controller and, and that switch. Uh, I do have a project box. I'm just, just not sure how I'm gonna put it into the car to be pretty and easily managed. Um, I'll probably have to make a few circuit diagrams to outline what everything is, how to replace certain parts once they go bad, if they go bad. Uh, yeah, but this is like, it is so close. <laughs> It's ridiculously close. Um, oh, all right. 